This is lesson 10.3, Arcs and Chords. Your objectives are to recognize and use relationships between arcs and chords, and recognize and use relationships between arcs, chords, and diameters. One of the main rules to remember here is that in a circle, when two chords are congruent, then the arcs that they intercept are also congruent, and vice versa. So if I have a circle, and I draw two chords, if the chords are congruent, then the arcs that they intercept are also congruent. So we'll be making chord measures equal each other and arc measures equal each other and certain things like that. Remember also things like the whole way around the circle is 360 degrees. A diameter cuts a circle into sections of 180 degrees. Always keep those in mind. Find the value of x in each circle. In this one, I have a circle with two congruent arcs, which means the chords are also congruent. So that means that I can say the, the 38 and the 4x plus 10 are the same. So I'll make the equation where those measures are equal. Remember, if segments are congruent, their measures are equal. I'm solving for x. Subtract 10 from each side. 4x is 28. And divide by 4. So x is 7. And that all came from the equation where I took the chord measures and made them equal each other because the arcs that they intercepted were congruent. On this one, I have two congruent chords, which means that the arcs that they intercept are also congruent. This arc measure is 70 degrees. The other two arcs, which are congruent, make up the rest of the circle. So this much plus the 70 has to make 360 degrees. So that means I can make an equation since this arc on the left, arc JK, is congruent to arc KL. And those three arcs all the way around will add up to 360. So 70 plus x plus x equals 360. And I'll solve for x. x plus x is 2x. Subtract 70. Two x is two ninety, and when you divide by two, x is a hundred forty five. So again, chords were congruent, which means their arcs are congruent, and the whole way around the circle makes three sixty. So I can add all of the chords up to three sixty. On question three. I have two congruent arcs that measure 109 degrees, which means that the chords that intercept those arcs are congruent. So I can make an equation where those equal each other. So 3x plus 2 equals 5x minus 7. And I'll solve for x. Get the x's on one side subtracting 3x from both sides. Add 7. And divide by 2. So x is 9 halves, or 4.5. And again, the chords were congruent because the arcs were congruent. So we can make their measures equal each other. For this one, 
they tell us that the two circles are congruent. If two circles are congruent and I have two arcs, or sorry, two chords on those circles that are congruent, that means that those measures of the arcs also have to be congruent. Because if the circles are congruent, they can overlap. The chords are congruent, so the arcs are congruent. So let's make the equation. 5x minus 1 equals 4x plus 7. Because if the chords are congruent, the arcs are congruent. Solve for x. Subtract 4x from each side to get the x's together. Add 1, and x is 8. So when two chords are congruent, the arcs are congruent, and vice versa. And if two circles are congruent, then their pieces are the same as well. The radius of circle N is 18, the measure of segment NK is 9, and the measure of arc DE is 120. Find each measure. This is one of those cases where they left out some information, so I'm going to just declare some information here. Let us also assume that segment XY is congruent to segment DE. That gives us two congruent chords, which gives us two congruent arcs, arc XY and arc DE, and also, because of that, and because these are perpendicular, that means that all of these pieces over here are congruent to all of these pieces over here. So anytime you have a radius that is perpendicular to congruent chords, then it gives you congruent sets of information. So, what I can say then is that if Kn is 9, then Hn is also 9. If the measure of arc DE is 120 degrees, another rule says that when a radius is perpendicular to a chord, that it bisects that chord and the arc. So that whole arc is 120, it's cut in half, 60 degrees and 60 degrees, which means these pieces up here are also 60 degrees. This central angle, angle HNE, intercepts the 60 degree arc, so that measure is also 60 degrees. In triangle HNE, we have 90 plus 60 plus 30. So we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle there. So to fill out the answers to the questions, measure of arc GE is 60. It's that arc right there. The measure of angle HNE is that 60. The measure of angle HEN is the 30. And the measure of segment HN is 9. So we had to assume some additional information that I think the book left out. And that is with segment XY being congruent to segment DE. You could have also said arc XY is congruent to arc DE. Either way, giving you congruent bits of those pieces gives you two congruent sets of information there. Remember when a radius bisects a chord, or when it's perpendicular to a chord, it bisects it and the arc. Lots of good symmetry there. In circle P, QR equals 7X minus 20, and TS equals 3X. What is X? Well, notice 
these two distances from the radius or from the center to the chord, not the radius, but from the center to the chord, those are congruent. They're both nine. And when that's the same, all these pieces are the same as well. So you could look at it either way. You could say, if the chords are congruent, then the distance from the center to the chord is congruent. Or you could say, if the distance from the center to the chord is congruent, then the chords are congruent. So if one is true, the other is true. So if the, the two distances there are the same, then the chords are the same. 7x minus 20 equals 3x. And I'll solve for x. Subtract 7x from each side. Negative 20 equals negative 4x. And divide by negative 4. x is 5. Remember, when the distance from the center is the same, then the chords are the same.